Good morning, afternoon, evening, fellow privateers. <clears throat> Welcome to the week ahead outlook. The one we do on Sunday afternoons before the open, try to get out before the open, um, which is in 25 minutes. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to keep this one brief. We're going to get through the charts. And uh, yeah, we're not really going to discuss too much about <clears throat> the coronavirus. However, um, there seems to be a bit of optimism coming out of the weekend. Um, read something about uh, some early analysis is indicating that New York City may be... Um, Things might be improving there. The number of discharges are increasing and the number of hospital, hospitalizations are decreasing. Um, I also saw something out of Northern Italy where things seem to be calming down there. Although Southern Italy, I think it's, uh, the numbers aren't as good. So too early to tell. Um, there's some good research. This guy, Scott Gottlieb, um, seems quite good, quite smart. He, he's put out, put out a report. It's G-O-T-T-L-I-E-B, Scott Gottlieb. Um, maybe worth following him on Twitter. Um, you know, here we are over two weeks, um, you know, Pretty much been on lockdown. Kids are at school over Zoom or Google Meets or any number of these um, video conferencing applications. Um, you know, we've been using Zoom, you know, for a long time, and it's 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 quite good. Um, but you know, life is still pretty disrupted. Um, People seem to be handling it pretty well, at least in our area. Um, you know, the weather's crap still. Anyhow, typical early spring in the Midwest. So it's not like we're missing out on a whole lot. So anyhow, let's get to the charts. I need to be out for the open in 20 minutes. Uh, here's a dollar index. Got smashed last week. Um... Dropped about four, I think it dropped about four and a half percent on the week. You can see here, you know, that the most recent swing, this was the safe haven bid and the dollar shortage theme. This is a daily chart. Shot up for two weeks straight up. Multi-year highs up here at 103. And now it didn't take long. It was down every day. It was... Uh, Actually, Monday was up, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday got hammered. So we're approaching the 200-day moving average, which is this pink line right around 98, and the two-thirds Fibo comes around 97.80, um, which I'm thinking we might hold. We do have um, the month and quarter end rebalancing. There's going to be a ton of noise in the dollar. Um, I'm getting mixed reports on if it's dollar bullish or dollar bearish. We'll talk more about that on our as we you know get some of the bank research. Um, one the one theme that seems to be consistent is a uh, cross yen selling. So why don't we why don't we take a look at um, we'll stick with we'll start out with currencies here and we'll look at a couple other um, and then we'll go to some of the other markets, but. Um, you know, here's dollar yen from that trough down at 101.20, rallied all the way up to 111.75. Someone, you can see these daily bars here. Um, there's a huge battle up here. Someone was on top in just yards. I mean, look at you see these two two doji days. Let me widen this out a little bit so you can see it. Um, you had these two doji days, and then finally it it, it failed and it rolled over. And we closed on Friday under the 200-day. We are a tad lower. Uh, yeah, we're down about 20 pips from Friday's close. We're trading around, we're actually trading right around Friday's low now. 
um, overall the dollar is a little bit higher. Um, it's just a little bit higher. Um, let me log out of this quick. And bear with me one second here. It's a little bit higher here on the open, but again, we're still in the twilight zone, so it doesn't really matter. Actually, you can kind of see this. Can you see this little green bar? It's right on the right on the third fib. So, dollar yen has retraced about a third of the move. Probably has some more room to go. Um, if we pop over to cable, um, you know, the biggest mover here in Asia is South Africa was downgraded um, over the weekend and dollar rand is up about two and a half percent and it's making you know, new highs for this move so it had a uh, had a big move up here on the open uh here's british pound again you know i'm just using these since we've had such outsized moves i like to get an idea of where we are so i'll just use like the, the simple fibonacci retracements um, you can see here in cable we Cable was just monster bit all day on Friday. I don't know what was going on. Bojo got the virus and cable took about 20 minutes for cable to sell off and then it came straight back bid. Um, you know, something we've noticed um, finally in the in the cross current cross currency spreads, um, the dollar finally has reacted to these uh, these big injections. So cable's now kind of probably not too far away from where it should be. Uh, the one that hasn't really picked up yet is yen, and I think that's because of it's their fiscal year end at the end of the month. Um, you know, but if this dollar continues to sell off, uh, you know, I think dollar yen has got another three big figures or so before it gets gets down to more reasonable levels. Um, so the two-thirds FIBO of this move is 125.15. Um, another one we can look at is Aussie, Aussie and Kiwi. Um, you know, Aussie's retraced about half of this move that we've seen. Um, hold on, let me turn this clock off. Got to mute these things. That's Aussie Kiwi. Uh, Kiwi the high actually on Friday. Kiwi is relatively stronger than um, some of the others. If we look at this day where we had the flash crash day, just that's a good good reference point because it was such a crazy massive range. You can see here on Friday, um, Kiwi retraced two thirds of the move. So on a relative basis, Kiwi is <laughs> outperforming. Some of the other pairs, um, Euro dollar, and this one. I sold this on Friday right at the close, taking a little bit of heat. Actually, now now it's a little bit lower. Um, this is today's price action. You can see here it got pretty close. One one eleven uh, sixty eight is a two thirds fib, and actually. In the very early open, according to Bloomberg, you got up to 111.63, which you will not see on this chart. Um, what else? Let's go to equities. S&Ps had a big rally. Um, let's do the maze. Had a big rally off the loss. We had this, you know, pretty interesting inverted hammer type day and that was on the low that was monday so monday i believe monday was limit down it was limit open limit down on the open um and then we had a, a nice bounce and it kind of failed you can draw a trend line it's not great but someone was talking about this trend line i guess it's okay um you could kind of take something like that where on friday we 
went up and tested it. And if you look at the FIP swing, this is a pretty nice place. If you if you think we're still in a bear market, you know, and you're supposed to be selling rallies, then I think you got to sell one third retracements. And I, I think I talked about that on Twitter. Or, um, you know, so de definitely look to sell rallies. The open here, according to IG, is this is one of the quieter um, weekend the weekend Wall Street charts that I like to look at before the futures open on Sundays. Um, I think at one point yesterday it was down about one and a half, two percent. It's only down about three quarters of a percent going into this open, which is now 15 minutes from now. Um, so nothing, nothing major. Um, you know, we're not expecting any limit, limit towns like we've seen in the past. Uh, so that's equities, that's the S&P 500, then take a look at gold. Gold had a monster week. We got bullish gold when it started holding this 1450. We talked about how important that level was. We had the big move up on Friday, and then it really shot on uh, Monday, Tuesday. And then we kind of topped out here around 1650-ish. Uh, this is the CFD future. I think the high in the future was... 1660 on Friday. Uh, highest high in the past 10 days was 1698, which we saw up here. Or no, I guess we went up, I guess we went right around here. Oh yeah, again, this isn't the future. Um, so gold, I'm not so sure about. Um, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we do have the month end rebalancing. So the pension money is buy, will be buying equities and selling bonds. And it looks like they started last week. I think because the amount is so large, they've got to do it um, across, you know, a week of trading, maybe even longer. Um, we've seen some big market on close buy imbalances all last week until Friday was actually a, a small, smaller uh, sell imbalance. Um, so probably another day or two of the of this, um, where there'll be equity demand into the close. Um, the bonds really haven't done anything. It's really quieted down. The move index has collapsed the past week. Um, this is because the Fed is in buying, you know, your amount of bonds every day, and they're going to continue to buy this week, although a smaller amount. I think it was 75 billion a day last week, and they're going to about. 55 or 60 billion a day this week. So, um, you know, with that in mind, you know, we'll, we, we do expect to see, I'd like to see these flows end so the market can trade more freely. Um, you know, we're still bearish. It's still, I'm thinking that we're going to make a lower low in S&Ps than what we've seen. Um, my target has been around 2,000 down to like 1,800. Um, not exactly sure the path it's going to take, um, but I'm, I'm definitely in, still in uh, buy buy uh, or sell rally modes. Um, and there there have been a few a um, little bit more upbeat reports from some of the investment banks, both on the virus front and um, on equities. So, you know, I, I'd be surprised if stocks sell off too much, um, at least in the early part of the week. Um, let's take a look at silver too. While I'm on the precious metals. You can see this. It's similar move, big run up last week, similar to gold. Um, and now, you know, the direction in gold and silver is basically um, whatever the equities end up doing because they're trading in line. So my, my guess is that end of month and quarter end, you're going to see more deleveraging. So, we, you know, probably um, gold and silver will struggle a bit as people square up their, their first quarter books. Um, and then longer term, I like gold and silver a lot higher because of 
all the inflationary actions that uh, the Fed and Treasury have taken and global central banks have taken. But we'll leave that for another time. All right, 15 minute mark. That's me done. Good luck this week. Uh, be careful with some of these month end quarter end flows because, uh, you know, liquidity is still pretty shitty across the board in all asset classes. I think you're going to have, you will have some outside moves. Right. Good luck. All the best. Cheers.